All right, thanks for the introduction. Um, so I'm Johan Kohn, I'm working at Azure Systems and I'm a security software engineer. And a uh, fun fact about Germany, calling yourself an engineer is quite a protected, protected job title. So I can call myself engineer because I have an engineering certificate actually. Um, but yeah, so I'm a, I'm a software engineer there. And um, I'm gonna talk about how we secured Cilium and SwireGuard encryption. Um, so first of all, I wanted to pose the question, why do you encrypt? And if you ask people uh, this question, you get two kinds of answers, essentially. You either have people saying, a company requires us to do it, we have a government agency which tells us to do it, so if you are in a, in a protected or regulated um, branch, for instance, finance or healthcare or something, or you have people saying zero trust, that came up a lot today, uh, defense in depth is another keyword, and, um, but in the end it, it will boil down to, I don't want to leak any sensitive traffic. And of course, compliance should somewhat enable security, but if that's really the case, this is uh, another talk. So if you go into the users MD, you have at least 10% of users saying they use Cilium's encryption, but a lot of them just say, yeah, we use Cilium generally, so I, guess, so I imagine that the percentage is a bit higher. So why do we encrypt at Azure Systems? Why do we use Cilium? Um, we don't trust the cloud provider. We don't trust the infrastructure. Uh, we don't trust the network. We don't trust the nodes and so on and so forth. So let's do a bit of threat modeling. So for us, this, this is how we see the world. So threats everywhere, threats everywhere in the cloud, um, ranging from the connection towards the Cube API, towards the nodes itself actually, um, of course in, in transit and storage. So how do we go about securing all these, um, against all these threats? So first of all, we need to secure in use, at rest, and in transit. So I'm just going to go briefly over how we've solved the first two points. And um, data in use is, I guess, the most interesting point. So what we do is we use um, confidential computing technology, uh, like Intel TDX and, uh, and AMD SEV, um, to shield your node from the cloud provider. So the hypervisor uh, can't even access the node's uh, memory. And because it's encrypted and isolated, and you can also ver verify uh, that your node is in the trusted execution environment. Um, this is a similar technology. I don't know if you've heard of the um, Confidential Containers project. Uh, those also have a, a talk, uh, uh, this KubeCon and last KubeCon. They've been around for a few, a few years. And uh, this is similar technology, but those guys um, put um, single pods or single containers inside a, tr inside a trusted execution environment. And what we do, we put the full node inside the trusted execution environment. So this is the difference. Um, a secure data at rest is sort of a solved problem. Um, the key difference between what we do at Azure and what some of you might do, if you trust, for instance, a cloud provider, is that you might say, okay, um, AWS, please encrypt my traffic, choose a key and, and encrypt it. And what we do is we, um, um, for instance, with the disk, we mount them with the mcrypt and the mrarity and with a key that's just inside our trusted execution environment, which itself, of, of course, is not available to the cloud provider. Um, so we encrypt within our trusted execution environment and therefore we extend our security boundary here. And this is uh, the, the most interesting point which I'm gonna um, expand on. And um, how do we secure data in transit? Of course, for Kubernetes, for the Kubernetes components itself, um, so for your kubelets and so on, uh, you have uh, your, your TLS configuration with you, which you should all have done. And for the workloads itself, we use Cilium. And how are we gonna do that is what I'm telling you about. So this is uh, constellation, this is our Kubernetes distribution. What's interesting about uh, how we use Cilium also is that we need to um, we need to run on all cloud providers and even OpenStack and everything that our customers want to run Kubernetes on. Um, so this is, we have heard about Cilium being um, cloud agnostic and this is what we leverage here. Uh, why we choose Cilium, I guess those are the main points. Um, this is why you are sitting here, I think. Um, it's, it's fast, observability is great, it has great policy features, it has a proven track record, a strong open source community, and of course it has recently graduated as a CNCF project. Yeah, just go, uh, let's go a bit over, um, about uh, nomenclature and what traffic types you encounter in your Cilium network, um, just that we, all, that we are all on the same page. Um, you could have uh, pods talking to each other, both of them being a pod network. Um, you could have a pod talking to a host pod. 
um, you could have the other way around, a host pod talking to a, um, a, pod, a pod network, and of course, host pods talking to each other. Host pods would be the same as the nodes, of course, talking to each other. Um, yeah, so um, those are the endpoints, and um, this is how we call the traffic, so we essentially name them after from which, um, from which network they uh, they come from if they go uh, if they come from the pod network and go to a pod network as pod to pod traffic and so on and so forth so pod to node traffic node to pod traffic node to node traffic of course pod to node and node to pod is essentially somewhat the same traffic um, and yeah um, if you um, if you use en encryption um, these are the the key aspects you want to be aware of and so. Uh, the first point is only covered by pod to pod encryption, and uh, all the rest are covered by by node to node encryption uh, generally um, yeah, and maybe let 's compare so what what Cilium does is um, Cilium of course offers IP second wireguard there used to be an IPsec node to node implementation, but this is this was unmaintained. Um, you can find the discussion and the issue in the, in the, in the slides. I've also uploaded them, so you can read about that more. So I guess if there's anyone willing to implement and to maintain it, I guess they are, they are welcome. Um, and what this talk is about is um, about strict pot pot encryption, and I am um, going into much more detail about why we need this. Um, there's also something strict node-to-node -node encryption. This is being talked about currently. There's also the issue linked there. Um, yeah, this is also in comparison to most other enterprise TNI. If you actually dive deep into their docs or if you dive deep into their implementation, um, most of them offer just pod to pod security. So if you have any, any node level component talking to a pod, uh, this will not be covered by IPsec or WireGuard. Um, so now we have a little quiz, and the, uh, and the question I want to pose is, is this traffic encrypted? So for that, I'm going to switch over here and do that as quickly. Um, okay, up here. Yeah, so this is how I installed, um, I think it's really built somewhat. Uh, this is how I in installed uh, Cilium. And um, I enabled encryption, we use WireGuard encryption, and we don't use any node-to-node -node encryption for this demo. So um, let's go back inside this cluster. And um, what we have here is just a normal, normal cluster with a healthy Kubernetes running. And I'm going to go into the namespace I've prepared. We have some host pods, uh, some pods in the pod network. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ping the pod on the second worker node uh, from, the, from the first pod. So ping this, this. And how um, am I actually going to um, observe if this is encrypted? So for this, I'm using just a basic TCP dump, just for simplicity reasons. Um, yeah. So. Um, please raise your hand if you think this traffic will be encrypted. Remember, I've installed it with encryption enabled. Cilium. So, yeah, this is just some background noise. I will go about the ping. Um, so, what do we see here? We see that the ping leaves the, leaves the pod interface and goes over the uh, WireGuard interface. So, this traffic is actually encrypted. Um, so now, uh, a similar case. Um, again, we have the same, we have the same uh, setup. We are, the installation is the same, but the only thing that is different, I will show you, um, that someone let the operator crash, deployed it wrong, or some, something happened, so the operator isn't there. And um, as a side note, I've, I'm using for, since I wanted to scale my cluster in the future, I'm also using a Cilium endpoint slices um, to, um, um, to have the endpoints um, uh, listed in, in a Cilium endpoint slice so it's um, much more performant to consume them. So Cilium endpoint slice is enabled, operators crash, but pod to pod encryption is enabled. So now I'm going to uh, do the same again. I'm going to ping the second pod on the worker node here. This one, I'm going to ping it. And please raise your hand if you think this traffic will be encrypted. 
this was a hand. Okay. So actually, what we what we see that it's still egressing the interface of the pod, but it's leaving it via the Selenium VXR interface. So it's just being tunneled and not encrypted. And actually, if you have the cloud provider um, sniffing on the on the wire between the nodes, um, the cloud provider can see the see the full traffic. So why is this happening? Why is this happening? So those are the backup slides, what we saw. Yeah, so this is, again, just a reminder, I sent traffic from pod one to pod three, essentially. And um, we saw it leaving the uh, LXC interface either over the VX interface, which was um, then, it was then being sent out unencrypted, or over the WireGuard interface. And um, if, we, if we look at the um, eBPF code, which is attached to the v, uh, LXC interface from the pod, you have this call stack. And somewhere below you have your WireGuard maybe redirect your encrypt function. And what does this function do? It redirects it maybe to be encrypted. So this is a simplified version. This is an even more simplified version. And what I wanted to point out is here below on the redirect, it's redirected to the WireGuard interface. So this is what we want to happen. Um, but this is only the case if the destination has a key set. And where does the destination come from? The destination is looked up. Um, um, the remote endpoint is looked up. Where is it looked up? In the IP cache. And you can list your IP cache in the Cilium agent uh, with the following functions. So Cilium VPF IP cache list. And you'll see if the encrypt key is set or not. So for all the pod IPs, for instance, here, we have an encrypt key set. But how does, how does those value come into the IP cache? So the values come into, into the IP cache um, when a new pod is created. Um, so the Cilium agent pushes then uh, then pushes the Cilium endpoint to the Cube API. And if you have Cilium endpoint slices enabled, then the operator consumes the Cilium endpoints and, um, and, churn and puts out Cilium endpoint slices. And only then uh, they are consumed by the Cilium agent too, so on the other node, and the IP cache is updated. So uh, the full red path here, this is the critical time in which traffic will be sent out to the pod that, that was newly created unencrypted. And what is also important to mention, um, I've, I've, I've let the operator crash in a second example, um, just to increase the, the critical path time here, essentially to infinity. You saw the, the operator was crashed for four days now. Um, so this makes the critical path uh, very, very long. But the critical path exists even if you have Cilium endpoint slices um, disabled, because you have still some delay between the endpoint being pushed and the IP cache on the other node being updated. So this might, of course, not what you want. If you have encryption enabled and you have a regulator saying you must encrypt your traffic, and um, quickly recall the threat model, so we have someone uh, sniffing on a wire. And our solution was to essentially have a strict mode, which uh, looks at the traffic either at the egress uh, on the VXA interface or on the egress on the um, native network and uh, do additional filtering on that. So you can use, um, so you can use a filter to, um, to decide if you want to um, send out this traffic or not. And how have we implemented this? This is a simplified version. This is even more simplified version. And we essentially do a, a, a CIDR check. So if the destination, the source address is in the strict CIDR, we give this function. Um, then it, based upon that, it's decided if it's sent out unencrypted. So if we use, for instance, we could install Simulum like so. And um, if then the destination and the source is both in the, um, in the pod cider, for instance, you can choose any cider you want, and in the pod cider, and we see this traffic leaving, wanting to leave the VXN interface, then we simply drop it. Yeah, and I'm going to show you how that looks like. So let's go over here. Uh, yeah, so what happens now? Uh, as I said, we have uh, essentially the same setup as before. So the operator uh, crashed. And let's go into the namespace. And we have exactly the same as we've done the last two times. Um, we are going to ping the pods 
uh, that I do the right track. The, the container namespace again and go to on this node and ping the pod on the other node just to show you that it works. Yeah, so what we already see that the traffic is not being, um, or that the ICMP response is not being received, but that could just mean that we leak traffic, but the node, the other node just decided that to drop the traffic, this would of course still leak the traffic if it's being sent out, um, just to prove that to you that this actually dropped. We see just um, the, the traffic just leaving the LXC interface and not going over the Vixa interface. So it's um, not, not sent out at all. So it's not leaked in any way. Yeah, so this is actually an update. I've looked at the Slim repository this morning <laughs> and they decided to, um, uh, to, to change the default. So um, I just showed you that there's a decision being made if the traffic is sent either over the um, uh, tunneling interface or to the WireGuard interface. And we have a new pull request running here. Let's see if it's already merged. No, but it was uh, open 10, 10 hours ago. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is the improvised part of the, <laughs> of the talk. Um, yeah, but the great news is Sim will be secure by default when you're using tunneling. Um, because what uh, then happens, right? What then happens is you do double encapsulation. So you route over the uh, tunneling interface, then over the wire gun interface again, and then only then you route um, uh, to the to the other node, um, which doesn't which does double encapsulation, which wasn't. Um, which was one of the reasons, I think, because um, why we had the other architecture before, but I don't know, you, <laughs> you need to ask the maintainers there, um, why they suddenly did, decided to change the, uh, the routing here. Um, so what about the, the, the strict mode now? What about the, the CIDR filter now? So um, I talked to the engineer that opened the pull request, and one of the, um, so this feature will still be, um, will still be an upcoming feature in 1.15, as of right now, at least. And um, why you still would want um, the, the CIDR filter is if you use native routing. Um, of course, using native routing and using WireGuard encryption on all your traffic is a bit um, is somewhat questionable because you're, you're not using native routing, you're tunneling over the WireGuard, which does tunneling for you. Um, but uh, still, in this architecture, you only tunnel, you encapsulate your packet once and not twice as in the other architecture. So there's a still um, um, a problem which the uh, strict, uh, which strict mode solves here um, in this architecture. So to wrap up, first of all, if, you, if, this, was, if, this, if this was news to you, uh, carefully read the docs. This was uh, documented for all the versions um, in which the old architecture applies. Um, Think about using a strict mode or upgrading to Cilium 1.15 in the future, um, depending on what architecture you have. Um, then use an architecture that fits, actually fits your needs. So if you are okay with double encapsulation, then use VXLAN. If you have requirements for native routing and encryption, of course, then you might uh, be looking at the strict mode. Um, if you have other requirements, of course, use an architecture that works for you. And the last point is uh, engage in the community. So um, as I said, um, we've implemented that feature um, for, our, uh, for our threat model, for our security model, because we didn't want to, our architecture before was Flannel over WireGuard, which we handcrafted and we shared the keys over the etcd because we hooked into that. And this is, of course, not a great architecture. Um, so we used Cilium for the WireGuard and for the key distribution and all that. And um, we just um, contributed a feature um, to make the security uh, fit our needs. And yeah, that was the summary. Are there any questions? Let's give Leonard a big round of applause while we think up some questions. I see a question over there. Do you want to come to the mic in the middle? What's the performance overhead of using encrypted traffic between pod to pod? 
So we have performance numbers of our um, of our commitments distribution, which some some basic performance numbers, but there are of course also performance numbers of Cilium itself, which you can look into the you can just look into the documentation of that. Um, it's not that huge. I don't know on, on the top of my head actually, but for us it's much more about since we don't trust the cloud provider, we have no other choice besides encryption. Um, so yeah, so we have performance numbers, which you can look in uh, our docs. Cilium has performance numbers. Um, those are, of course, a bit more fine-tuned. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess it's a few percent, depending on what metric you want to look at. Any more questions? As you're trying to debug and make sure that this encryption is happening, um, and, you know, this approach of, hey, I do TCP dumps, I sniff on everything. Like, have you, are there tools that you found that, that accelerate that or make that a little bit easier to try to troubleshoot? Mm. So what I did was a bit of uh, test-driven development. So I've um, implemented, um, in the first iteration, I've implemented the test in the same test suite beforehand and then just ran it until they were happy. And essentially doing the same thing I did here, so um, scaling down the operator, scaling it up, and they actually also use TCP dump um, for that. Um, I think you have uh, other introspection tools are also good. I, I haven't used Hubble for that, for instance. Um, but if you want to actually have a look at the interfaces, how it's routed over there, I think that going with the with the old school tools isn't that um, isn't that far off. So that what that what was I used. <laughs> 